I like Mark Critch. As government comedians go, he's pretty funny. I know he won't like me calling him a government comedian, but I'm sorry he is. Here's his government resume. Ten years as a government-paid satire writer for This Hour Has 22 Minutes. He appeared in the government show called CBC's Winnipeg Comedy Festival. I mean, don't you think it's a little bit weird to say you're all about satire, you know, mocking the powerful, but then working for a huge government corporation that gets a billion dollar tax bailout every year from the government? I mean, what's next? A government punk band paid for by tax dollars too? It just doesn't work that way. Anyways, Critch is a bit of a CBC star. Uh, there he is, splashed right on top of the CBC's website for the show This Hour Has 22 Minutes. He's one of the four stars of that show. He's one of the public faces of the show. He's a CBC on-air personality in every sense. He's part of their brand. Anyways, despite working as a government comedian, I think Critch is pretty funny. But like most CBC staff, he leans left. Maybe most entertainers do, that's fine. His main show, This Hour Is 22 Minutes, has a really strong anti-Stephen Harper bent, but they occasionally mock a liberal or a new Democrat just to appear balanced. Again, when you work for a government satire company, you're never really going to be free to say what you really mean. I mean, we're free here at The Rebel. We can say or do whatever we like without fear. We don't have any government subsidy over our heads to be taken away if we say the wrong thing. If people don't like our conservative slant, well, they can just click away. We don't have the power to tax them to subsidize us. Anyways, I'm talking about Mark Critch today because he has jumped in to the federal election campaign hard. He doesn't like a conservative MP named Paul Calandra. I really don't know a lot about Calandra or the nature of Critch's beef with him. I really don't care. It may well be legitimate. Critch might be totally right, but that's not my point. My point is Critch has launched a political campaign against Paul Calandra right now in the middle of the election. Here, take a look at a few of these tweets that Critch started writing over the past couple days. Critch started out by complimenting another CBC employee, Rosemary Barton, for putting Paul Calandra in his place on TV. And here's what Critch said. He said, what a slippery tool. Okay, that's spicy, but so what? But then he changed his tone from commentary to proactive campaigning. He wrote, I am so coming for Paul Calandra. Politicians should represent, not lie and hide. Really? So Critch is announcing in advance that he's got a vendetta, that he's going to get an MP who's a liar? I mean, that sounds like what politicians say about each other, not what people who work for the CBC say about politicians. And then Critch said this, which I think is really odd. This is his next tweet. He said, I will donate one dollar to Newfoundland Sexual Health for each person that tweets, Paul Calandra, you are a tool, up to $1,500. By the way, that's a Planned Parenthood abortion clinic, which is pretty weird, especially considering the huge scandal of Planned Parenthood USA illegally selling baby body parts. So let's put that weird choice aside for a moment and focus on the other weirdness of telling people that he will essentially pay his own money to have them tweet public insults at a Tory candidate? <laughs> it's not even commentary anymore. It's, it's not comedy, it's activism. It's, it's campaigning during a campaign. It's what the Liberals and the NDP and the Tories do, and now Critch is doing it too, which is fine, but he's a CBC personality. If any member of the public would click on his Twitter biography, they would see right there he's advertising he's a CBC star. That's how he describes himself, and he is campaigning with money, a campaign budget against the Tory, but then he just drops any pretense. Here's what he says, and I think this is the worst tweet of them all. He says, Paul Calandra is clearly running scared. Can't wait until 22 minutes starts up. Okay, so you have a CBC pundit launch a partisan attack during a campaign, then asks others to do so too and offers to pay his own money. Then he says he's coming for Calandra. Weird, partisan, political, but look at that last part. He can hardly wait for 22 minutes to start up again. He's clearly implying that he's going to use the government podium to continue his campaign against Calandra. There's no other reasonable interpretation of that. He's going to use the CBC for his political vengeance. Look, of course government comedians are going to tilt left. 
because only big government spending parties are going to keep subsidizing a media corporation a billion dollars a year that has given Critch 10 great years of solid, high paying work. I mean, a lot tougher to be a private sector comedian working hard night after night for a few hundred bucks at comedy clubs across the country every night on the road. I think it's like the difference between most government and private sector workers of any trade. Naturally, Critch and his government comedian friends hate the Tories. They want those CBC comedy subsidies to keep coming from government. Anyways, I tweeted back to Critch, not in a mean way, I sort of like the guy, but in an asking way, isn't he abusing his government office? I say again, if he were a private comedian, no worries, it'd be fun, but he's a government comedian? And the government agency he works for actually has a code of conduct that covers just this thing. I mean, look here, this is the CBC website policy 2.2.17. It regulates political activity. You can find this online yourself. Critch clearly does news commentary. And the section there says that as such, he, quote, may not engage in designated political activities like campaigning. Now, the rule is even more general, too. It says that any on-air personalities, anyone at all who's on TV, quote, must adhere to the values of fairness and balance, which state, among other things, that individuals and organizations must be treated even-handedly. During an election or referendum period, all content related to the campaign, parties or candidates, regardless of the department concerned, is subject to the values of impartiality and integrity, unquote. So Critch's conduct is covered about three ways here. He does general on-air content, he does news commentary, and he's campaigning during an election period. He is spending money. And worst of all, he's threatening to use the CBC show itself to prosecute his campaign against the Tory MP he hates. Look, I think Mark Critch needs to make a choice. The same choice any other public sector worker has to make, whether we're talking about a postman, or a Revenue Canada tax collector. If you want to be partisan, you can't do it while you work for the government. That applies doubly so for government comedians. I 100% support Critch's freedom of speech and his right to campaign hard against anyone, against any party. I think Critch can be hilarious, by the way, and he'd probably be a great candidate himself, but I don't know if he's too big a big shot now to go back home to Newfoundland, where he's originally from. Mark Critch has as much right as you or I to love or hate any politician he likes. I, I believe that. But he just can't do it while he works for a government agency that takes a billion dollars a year from us and that bans politics from its on-air personalities. For the Rebel.media, I'm Ezra Levant.